I don't know what standards you may have as a, as a complete entertainer, but Gene Kelly certainly lives up oh. to all of them. He is one of the most acclaimed uh, performers of our times ever to appear on screen. He's won an Oscar, an Emmy, and his additional credits include choreographer, producer, and director. It's a great kick to have him here tonight. Would you welcome Mr. Gene Kelly? Let's call love coming from an audience. Shanky yes, was right. Yes, and now I feel secure again, <laughs> Sheldon. <laughs> I, you know I, heard, I heard that part, but I yeah, heard go that ahead. thing about y your real name is Sheldon. Right. Oh, well, my real name is Eugene. You see, you can't be, a, you can't be baptized, at least in the Catholic Church. Just, there's no St. Jean, so it's St. Eugene. But it did me a lot of good because it, I had to fight my way to school. It was considered a sissy name. So when Gene Tunney beat Jack Dempsey, <coughs> then I was king. And I became Gene. That's interesting. That. That's a but true up to thing. then it was Eugene. My, yeah, my real name is Eugene Kelly. But, uh, and I'm not Italian, no. <laughs> Singing in the rain with Eugene Kelly. No, that no, doesn't, no, uh, no, doesn't no. make it at all. But I've, ever since I was about 10 years of age, I was Gene. But before that, it was terrible. You could say, Eugene, how are you, Eugene? But, but kids are, I don't, but kids I don't are cruel, feel like a they? Sheldon. Do you feel like a Eugene? No, no, no. It's a strange thing now. The only person who did call me that you were talking about your mother and uh, I, uh, no mother jokes here but she when she would get angry she'd say Eugene ah. and then I knew she was mad and I would say to me even when I was in oh in college even that old if she'd say Eugene I knew you she knew. Would really burned at me now he looks like a Johnny <laughs> yeah well he's a, like a Johnny <laughs> Midwestern All-American yeah. hi guys yeah, hi guys yeah, only my mother really calls me John and when she uh, gets hacked she can say John, Same thing, huh? and then it's John, and he, mm, <laughs> you know there is trouble afoot, you know, <laughs> that's, true. that's funny. There were, you know, kids can be very cruel when they're young, but they don't realize they're being cruel, no. I guess, but they are, but Melvin was a name for a while that, when you were a kid, you were named Melvin or something like that. Yeah, that we consider that a sissy on. name. Seymour. Seymour. But I have a kid named Timothy, he's just 13 now, and all of a sudden this year, he says, my name's not Timothy, it's Tim. Yeah, I can't you call know, him Timothy. We have a Tim at home, too. They, yeah, that's right. He's 14. Yeah, yeah. And when my son, when I, I named my son uh, Christopher Carson after my grandfather, and when he was a kid, we started calling him Kit, because that's Kit Carson, and my sure. dad was, call, he was called Kit all his life. And all of a sudden, he came home from school one day and says, I, I, I don't want to be called Kit anymore. The kids were calling him Kitty Cat. Uh -huh. <laughs> Now, That's Kit, a masculine name, frontier Kit scout, you know, Kit, yeah, and all of a sudden they're saying guy. Kitty Cat, so now he's Chris, and that was it. <laughs> Great to see you. It's good and to I be thank here. You for and uh, uh, I, I, it's, it's a funny thing that happens. The reason I'm here is because uh, I just finished a, a, a picture with Fred Astaire, and I had ah. to, uh, to direct uh, Fred Astaire, which is not very hard to do, you know, and uh, put on some singing and dancing for him. And the picture's called That's Entertainment Too. Ah. So, um, uh, well, at any rate, everybody got excited about uh, Fred Astaire and myself getting together. And actually, all we did was have a ball. We went down and put on some songs and dances and sort of glued the picture together. And we think it's a very good picture. And it's a sequel to That's Entertainment, which most of you, I'm sure, have seen. That's got to be so. Super. Uh, but anyway, we're in the news now. Here's Fred, here's Gene. Fred was here last week. Fred here was yes, here he last week. Yes, he told me. I, I just saw him yesterday. I suppose you and both Fred get tired of the um, inevitable comparisons. You know, they say uh, Fred Astaire, uh, Gene Kelly. And actually, you were two different styles, really. Yeah, that's true. You were we, more we, we athletic uh, it, yes. in, your, uh, in the things you did. We, we, we laugh about that because we, we often read articles that say... Uh, uh, their styles are similar, or, or did one copy the other? And uh, uh, we used to resent it the first couple of years. And then when we worked together, and we 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 had to play Alphonse and Gaston, we we'd say, "Could you do this eight bar? Could you do this eight? Because we didn't have different styles. That uh, and we uh, we formed a friendship. And for wow. the last 
30 years we've been dear friends. Let me ask you something else that I was thinking of when we were talking about the kids' names, like Melvin and, and Eugene. When I was growing up, and, and if, if a guy was a dancer, right away again they'd say, Sissy, he's dancing. Well, my, my, uh, mother, my mother tried to send my two brothers and myself to dancing school. And it, it was no go because we, we, we had to find our way back home. But when I got into high school, uh, and again, this sort of goes back to your discussion earlier with, with Sheldon, I mean, Shecky, and uh, the... Uh, you can call uh, me uh, Sheldon, uh, Eugene. So anyway, Sheldon, <laughs> the, uh, John. Yes. The, uh, it made you popular with the girls if you were a good dancer. And my kid brother, not my older brother, my kid brother, Fred, I know, Ed, you know Fred, the, the, my kid brother, Fred, taught me how to dance. And I was a big shot with the girls. But I, too, was truthfully shy. I couldn't go into a, a room and say, may I have the next dance? In those days, when you put your arm around a girl, you had to dance with her. You know, the, you just didn't go up and put your arm around a girl. And it was a, it was a form of courtship. And uh, dancing was the, the way to meet a girl and the way yeah. to get close to a girl. Nowadays, contact is out. You know, no. if, you, if you touch, you're disqualified. Can I have this dance? And they're over yeah. that side of the room. Ha, 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 ha. It's, it's a different, different world, but it's nice. A lot of people make a lot of money. Well, it was a way of socializing. You get to know the girl and talk and everything else. These kids don't talk to each other when they dance. Yeah. They just the wait music's too loud. Something happens. I don't know what it is. Well, is it, I just... well, it's too dark to read a newspaper, and it's too loud to talk, and uh, <laughs> the food's no good, so you better get up there and dance. <laughs> Let me take a short break here. We'll be right back. I love that Stay with the it. We're talking with Gene Kelly and Sheldon Shecky Green. Stocker Channing and Ronnie Graham will join us. How many, uh, we were talking to Fred about uh, the way he prepared to do dance numbers and motion pictures um, and the rehearsals he went through. Uh, it's, it's a very arduous, physical, exhausting oh, yes, type of work yes. to do. What's the longest, uh, the largest amount of times you had to go, say, say for motion pictures, to rehearse eight? It, it depends. It depends on the number. Now, the, the number you were kidding me about, Singing in the Rain tonight. Oh, I wasn't kidding. It was a very was... easy number to do because the, the, uh, the song said it all, and you, you sort of set it on the song. Right. As a matter of fact, the producer, who happened to be the writer of the song, Arthur Fried, said, what are you going to do with the song? And I said, well, it's going to be raining, I'm going to be singing, and then I'm going to dance. And, and uh, the uh, uh, a fine musician by the name of Roger Edens dug up that brag, doo -ba -doo -boo -boo -boo, and that threw me at the whole thing. But there are, there are the, the one number that I spent longer on than any number in the history, I guess the history of the world, anybody did, was the number I did with a newspaper and a squeaky board. And I, I, I don't know how many people saw that picture, but I had to, uh, thank you, I had to tear that apart, and I made up my mind I was gonna do it. It was, it was a hard number to do. Did you ever fall, I mean, in front of an audience when you're I fell once in front of an audience in an actual performance at the LaSalle Hotel in Chicago in 1933. Chicago, and I broke my arm. And, uh, Did you fall or duck in Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> and I got up and I took a bow and I, I walked off. Yeah. I broke, broke my arm. I fell on a greasy spot on the, on the uh, dance floor. Yeah, That's the only time. Yeah, that was good. I, if I watch, you know what I won't watch on television? Our ice skaters. They during the Olympics. I don't know what that is. I sit there and I say, she's going to fall. And inevitably, as soon as I say it, mm -hmm. <laughs> right on her can. It's like the skier that comes down on a wide world every time. I can't watch that anymore. <laughs> the agony of defeat. Yes, that poor guy. Oh, that hurts. Really which, hurts. Which film did you enjoy the most? And it gave you the most pleasure. It was not a musical. It was called uh, The Three Musketeers. And uh, I got a chance to put a mustache and a beard and long hair down here and do a lot of sword play and punching and fighting. I thought it was just a bunch of fun. Yeah. It's like doing a, a Western with plumes. And uh, that, that was the picture I had the most fun in. The thing about dancing, you mentioned that, that uh, uh, Fred and I often discuss this, uh, uh, Fred Astaire, and, and my brother Fred too. The, the easier dance looks, usually the more time you put in on it. And if you can make the audience feel that the dance is thrown away and very careless, you've seen Astaire and Rogers, for example, floating around the ballroom floor. Well, they were killing each other, getting those steps together and working and working and sweating. But you must never let the audience, 
Now, this is a dancer's trade secret. You must never let them think you're working hard. If you have to jump over something, you can't make it look like that. It has to be very light and very effortless. And to do that is the most important. Yeah. I guess that's the mark of any artistry, whether it's a singer or a dancer, it. is just to, to make it look, they're not conscious of the technique hide at all. The it's just hide there, the and yeah. they're not conscious of what you're doing. How about leading ladies? This is, we were talking about something during the break. It's interesting. I suppose every time you go out, and I've seen you places where there's dancing, every woman in the place figures, you know, you get up every in the morning and start dancing because, you know, yes. and that you can't wait to get to a dance floor and dance. Now, how do you diplomatically, without getting somebody's nose out of joint, oh, Mr. Kelly, won't you just dance a few steps with me? Now. Well, some, but, some, so this is, this, this sometimes is a problem at big parties, uh, and, and you try to be polite. And uh, the, the uh, uh, most women of my generation are good dancers. I mean, the kind of dancing we're talking about at the break, cheek to cheek. And they'll want to dance, but if they come up to, say, Fred Astaire, and they'll say, oh, come on, Mr. Astaire, I know you just can't wait to get up on the floor. And he's sitting, you know. Mm. And, but the minute he puts his arm around the lady, she'll freeze. And she thinks that he's going to throw her over the desk. And put her there. <laughs> now, all, and do all we're doing is just this, very simply done like this. Nothing else, just, just uh, the way anybody would do. But you can feel the lady is this tight, and she, she's waiting for you to throw her over the chair. So, and she Why don't you do that sometime? That'll probably put us... <laughs> Put a stop to that very quickly. Just give her a shot over the bar, and that's it. No, but that is true. They, they expect something, and, and uh, ballroom dancing, social dancing, is a, is a polite way of, of right. meeting and talking and chatting, and also moving to rhythm, to good music. Yeah. It's a lovely thing to do. I like to dance with girls. Yeah, well, that's... I really do. Yeah. I, they make the best, by far the best partners <laughs> for fellas. Uh, let's sell something here. We shall be back. Do you know where your coughs come from? What? <laughs> Watch this from Vic's Formula 44.